Uh, we want to get you on to another big story tonight. One I think that's not getting nearly the national coverage that it deserves. I'm talking about the high school shooting in Marshall County, Kentucky. Two students have been killed, 18 injured. One of their classmates appears to be the lone suspect. No name, but he's described as being only 15 years old. And tonight he's charged with two counts of murder, 12 counts of first degree assault. Reporter Mark Salinger is reporting for WHAS in Louisville. He joins us from Benton, Kentucky right now. Mark, if you can, give, give us a feeling for what's going on going on in the town. How are they dealing with this? Yeah, hey Bruce, good evening. I think that the, the town sentiment right now can be described in two words. One mourning, the other gratitude. Mourning for the two lives lost and all those injured and uh, gratitude for all those first responders who came to the rescue and to the aid of all those people who were injured and uh, who could have gotten injured. Now, I'm standing right at the road to the high school. It's about 400 yards in the other direction. Now, students and parents have been coming through for the past couple hours to pick up what they have left behind in the school when the shots ran out Tuesday morning. That's the first that they've been in let into the school. Mark, another question. Uh, I heard somebody down there say this is not the place where this sort of thing is expected to happen. Have they come to grips with the fact that this is the place where this sort of thing happens? Soft target, no security, that sort of thing? Well, I think that they are just coming to terms with the fact that it happened just now. But the high school behind me where this happened, it's the only high school in Marshall County. It has about 1,500 students. Most of the students know each other. They live uh, nearby. They all live within the same community. One of the uh, state or one of the Kentucky State Police troopers that I spoke with today said everybody knows somebody or knows somebody who knows somebody that is affected by this, who has a relative that went to that school. One of the troopers that uh, Kentucky State Police says or was one of the first to arrive on the scene his daughter went to that school and when he saw one of the girls who was uh, shot he, he immediately thought that uh, it was his daughter luckily uh, I guess you could say for that trooper it wasn't but still a lot of mourning and a lot of questions to be answered of course the motive we still don't know why this shooting happened but of course a lot of questions uh, more than answers in Benton Kentucky tonight Okay, Mark Salinger reporting for WHAS in Louisville. Uh, Mark, thanks a lot for that report. Let's go back to uh, Dr. Cutts. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, I, I had said last night uh, that perhaps compassion fatigue has set in. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the big national coverage. I didn't see the outrage. I don't see the mm -hmm. gun debates. What, what, what's going on? I think compassion fatigue is a part of it. You know, normally that, that involves people who are right close with trauma and helping people in crisis. But it also happens that you know, we can't continually be stimulated in the same way. It's leading to people being desensitized, you know. So that is a part of what's going on. We're inundated so much with school shootings and violence and violence in the world that on some level to stay sane, we have to, to tamp down our reactions to survive in a way. Do, do people also get the feeling that, well, nothing's going to be done? I mean, the government hasn't done yeah. anything. We don't have any new gun legislation. Yeah. I don't see any additional security. I mean, yeah. I would also attribute it to learned helplessness. You know, we've, we've tried, we've seen people try, we've seen senators get shot, you know, and nothing happens. You know, we hear this over and over. In order for people to want to change or to put the energy into change, we have to believe that it's possible. And we're getting so many messages that it's not possible that that leads to people sort of giving up in some way. I'm going to bet gun sales are up again today. I mean, so, you know, the, the other side of this, people starting mm -hmm. to arm themselves. If government yeah. can't help me, if you can't help me, I'm going to help myself. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. That's the other way that people go, not just becoming a nerd, but some people become hyper vigilant and scared. And so that's also why you see those gun sales go up. And also because people are afraid that they're going to take their guns away. And so they rush to buy guns. Dr. Nicole Cox, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You know, I started this discussion on Offscript last night asking if compassion fatigue had set in when it comes to these mass shootings. I think we've had, what, 11 already this year? 15,000 people viewed my comment on WUSA 9 Facebook page. Kim tweeted, I have to say, when I heard the breaking news, I didn't react with shock. I sighed and thought, not again. I don't know about compassion fatigue, just worn down by all the tragedy, which is what the doctor was saying. Andrea wrote, outrage is everywhere except in the hearts of those in position to do something to help. If you want to place blame, look to the NRA. And Ebony thinks some people don't really care until it hits home. Change is needed seriously. Tweet me your thoughts using the hashtag OffScript09. We're going to be back right after this.